What's going on everybody? This is Jonathan Evans and listen, today we're going to learn a little something about rejection. Let's get into it. Listen, I want to talk about this because there's a lot of people who have experienced rejection, experience being unlikely, experience being the one who's set aside, the one who's not brought in, the one who's not held close, the one who's pushed far away or stiff-armed, if you will, for all of you football people. You experience the idea and the realization of rejection. Also in families, when people that are supposed to love you the most reject you the most. And a lot of us have a lot of pain from that. And then we correlate that rejection by man as also a rejection from God. We make the human also spiritual. We, we try to put those two together and we feel like because we don't have the favor of man, we also don't have the favor of God. That God is no longer shining his countenance upon me, giving me grace, giving me mercy. That God is not thinking about me, that he has left me, he's forsaken me because these people have left me and forsaken me. And those two things are not the same, but it feels the same. Because when you're sitting in rejection and you're sitting in dark rooms and you're sitting in those places where you experience that hurt when someone who was supposed to love you drops you or leaves you out in big moments or doesn't call you when something's going on or marginalizes you in important scenarios, you feel the rejection and then you go to God. Lord, what's going on? Why aren't you here for me? Why aren't you looking out for me? But the Bible is clear that God will never leave you nor forsake you. But if that's true, then why do I feel so much rejection? And the reality is, is because we correlate what's happening in history with what's happening in eternity. And they're not the same. I experienced this when I look at the life of David. Do you know that Samuel went to go choose a king from the sons of Jesse and Jesse left David out? Now, I need you to understand that in the ancient Near East, that was not a thing that would happen. If one of your sons is going to be chosen to be king, <laughs> you're bringing in all of them. Nobody is going to get offered a max contract and you don't give all of your kids the opportunity. And that culture to be chosen to be king was huge. And he was going to choose from one of the sons of Jesse and Jesse left David out. It wasn't just David was out there tending the sheep and he forgot to show up. No, Jesse didn't want him there. Jesse marginalized David, put him in the back of the line, told him, I don't want you to come to be selected because Jesse in his mind thought it couldn't be David. He's the youngest and he's the one who's a part of our family issue. You see, many of you don't know that David was rejected by his father and his mother. Many of you don't know that David was the outsider in his family. Even when David came, when Israel was fighting against Goliath, his own brothers were looking at him like, man, get out of here. David experienced the rejection that you feel from his own family. I mean, you got to understand that David had different circumstances. Many people don't know, but Psalm 51, 5 says this, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin my mother conceived me. This is what David is saying. David is saying, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin, my mother conceived me. Uh-oh. Is it possible that David had a different mother than his brothers? Is it possible that David was not conceived the same way his brothers were conceived? Because he says that in sin, my mother conceived me. Is it possible that Jesse left David out because he was more of a stepchild than a real child. Because David gives us a clue in Psalm 51, five, you can look at it for yourself. The mother is the subject and he says that I was conceived in sin. I was not brought about the same way my brothers were brought about. So when Jesse left him out, Jesse said it couldn't be David. David wasn't conceived like the people who are a part of my real family. David even lets us know another clue in Psalm 27, 10, where he says, my father and mother have forsaken me. He's telling you he's got family issues. He's telling you he's dealing with the rejection that you feel. He's telling you he's in the back of the line. He's telling you that he was purposefully marginalized when a max contract was on the table, when Samuel was coming to choose a king. He's telling you that he wasn't even invited to be chosen. 
My mother and father rejected me. Why would Jesse reject him? Well, because Jesse knows the law. Jesse knows because of how David was conceived, because he's not really a part of the family, I mean, kind of, but not really, not the way where God would use him. You find it in Deuteronomy 23, 2. It says, no illegitimate birth shall enter the assembly of the Lord. Ooh, I'm taking you through this. No illegitimate birth. David said, in sin, my mother conceived me. Deuteronomy 23, 2 says, no illegitimate birth shall enter the assemblies of God. You don't think Jesse knew that? And you don't think Jesse knew that David was con conceived different than his brothers? Why do you think Jesse left him out? Because it couldn't be David. He's the illegitimate child. And some of you feel illegitimate. Because you've been left out, because you haven't gotten the call, because it hasn't come through, because the person ignored you, because even your parents set you to the side, you feel like you're so illegitimate in an earthly way that that means you're illegitimate to be used in a heavenly way. Oh, but everything worked against David and you feel like everything worked against you. The past was not in his favor. His family was not in his favor. His position was not in his favor. His age was not in his favor. The rules were not in his favor, but God gave him favor. Don't you know that God can give you favor when things are not in your favor? Don't you know that God looks to the back of the line to bring those from the back of the line to the front of the line? How many testimonies in the Bible of people who shouldn't have been called that God went and got? for his purposes. See, many people think God calls those who are qualified. No, he qualifies those he calls. And that's the way that it works. That's why the Bible says the last shall be first and the first shall be last. That God's grace went and got David when his father rejected him. Don't you know that God's grace and mercy, like two sheepdogs, rounds up the sheep that feel like they're illegitimate, that feel like they're not a part of the pack, that feel like they've been marginalized and set to the side, that God went and got David. Samuel said, is there anyone else? Because God has not chosen the seven sons you put in front of me, Jesse. And Jesse said, well, I mean, I got another one. I mean, he's outside tending the sheep. And Samuel said, bring him in here. God is telling you, come on in here. I got you. I see you even though you feel unseen. You feel rejected, but in my kingdom, you're accepted. It's not what you feel. I'm telling you what it really is. David, who had everything working against him, God had his eye on him. Why? Because he had the right heart. He was the right person for the job, even though he was neglected by all the people in his life. Are you the right person? Do you have the right heart? I know you feel rejected by man, but God has his eye on you. God had his eye on me. I felt that way because I was the one in my family that struggled the most with school. I was the one in my family that struggled uh, in learning, that struggled to pick things up, that struggled with speaking, that struggled with being in front of people. And I'm watching all of my siblings just explode and do well. And I'm like, well, certainly I can't really fit in to this family because I'm not good at any of those things. I'm on the outside. They never made me feel like that, but I felt like that. But God had his eye on me. God had his, has his eye on you. And even though you're the outcast or you feel rejected, God loves to go to the back of the line and bring those who are the most unlikely to the front of the line. David, the greatest king in the Bible outside of Jesus Christ, was rejected by his own family. Rejection can simply be the precursor to your redemption. Sit tight. Wait on the Lord and pray and trust his word that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm with you. 
rejection could just be the precursor to redemption. And then once it happens, make sure you tell your story. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord and know that it will not go in vain. Listen, ring the bell, like, share, subscribe to the channel and share this video if it meant something to you and you know it'll mean something to someone else. Let's get it together. What's up everybody, this is Jonathan Evans. Listen, we just talked about the concept of rejection and what it really means and what it really doesn't. I want you to share this video. I want you to make sure that it gets out there because a lot of people are feeling like God has left them because people have left them and that's not true. Listen, become a part of the team because we encourage each other on this channel. Like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell for every video so that you keep getting the notifications. Let's go.